May I speak to you in the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. Amen. One uh, explanatory note uh, as I begin this morning. Uh, in our readings, Simon, Simon Peter, Peter, and Cephas all refer to the same person uh, whom we know and love as Saint Peter. Uh, just in case you were wondering if there's any confusion, it's all the same guy. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus returned to the Galilee region and began teaching in the synagogues after his baptism and temptation in the wilderness of Judea. He made a brief diversion to his home village of Nazareth, but things did not go well there. He was run out of town and headed to Capernaum, a city on the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Lake of Gennesaret. Most of Jesus' ministry will take place in the surrounding towns and fishing villages of the Galilee, teaching and healing all who came to him, gathering ever larger crowds. Our Gospel reading today picks up the narrative with Jesus teaching on the seashore near Capernaum. He requisitioned Simon's boat as a platform to teach from because the seashore had become so crowded with people. Previously, Jesus had stayed at Simon's house in Capernaum and even had healed his mother-in-law. As an aside, I want to underscore that Jesus and Simon already have a relationship with each other. This is not their first meeting. Before his baptism, it is possible that Jesus worked as an itinerant carpenter in the booming towns, docks, and fish packing plants around the Galilee. He probably got to know some of the guys working in the fishing industry. One wonders what they thought of his career change. At any rate, this isn't Simon's first rodeo with Jesus. He even calls Jesus master, which indicates that he already understood himself to be, in some sense, a disciple of Jesus. But Simon has been up all night fishing, and he hasn't caught anything. Knowing Simon, he is probably in a mood. Jesus interrupts his work cleaning, uh, interrupts Simon's work cleaning the nets to borrow his boat. Okay. Then, when Jesus finishes teaching, he gets all up in Simon's business and tells him how he should fish. Put it into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Really? You're going to tell me how to fish? But Simon doesn't. It doesn't make sense. It goes against everything he knows about fishing. But something in him is willing to trust Jesus. He takes a chance. And when he does, he hauls in so many fish that he has to call another boat for help. There are so many fish that both boats start to sink. It is a miracle. Now, this abundance of fish is amazing. It grabs our attention. It just screams to be allegorized. And I'm sure I've done it before and will do it again. But today, I am more struck by Simon's response than I am by the haul of fish. The miracle to me is the shift in Simon's perception of Jesus. It is like he is seeing him for the very first time. And it drives him to his knees. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. I hear echoes of the prophet Isaiah, whose vision of the glory of God caused him to cry out, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. 
Simon recognizes the glory of God in Jesus, evoking a response of profound awe and humility. It isn't that Simon is such a terrible person, but rather that the power and presence of God shakes him to his core. He suddenly gets it. God is no longer some abstract concept or cruel tyrant or demanding judge or whatever image Simon had. God is love incarnate here, now, with him, calling him, loving him. And this perception changes everything. First thing it changes is Simon's identity. For the first time, the text refers to him as Simon Peter. There is more to him than he thought. Sinful man that he is, notwithstanding, Jesus calls him, desires him, wants to work through him. Simon Peter knows that he is loved and lovable, and that opens up a whole new self-understanding for him. He is no longer the person he thought he was. This change of identity brings a change of vocation, too. Now, I suspect this had been brewing for some time as Simon got to know Jesus and Jesus got to know him. Simon was at an impasse. Fishing wasn't working for him anymore. The nets were coming up empty. He could stay out all night, work harder, but things didn't improve. His life was not bearing fruit. Something had to change. To break this impasse, Simon had to move out into deep water and let down his nets. He had to move beyond his comfort zone and allow God to do what he could not do for himself. It is in this act of trust and of risk that Simon moves past the impasse. A new possibility opens up for him. Simon was a fisherman. Simon Peter will fish for people. Actually, Jesus says, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. Catching, in Greek, literally means to see alive. It has the connotation to take alive, like a soldier taking a prisoner alive. But to see alive also has the connotation of capturing someone's attention. Simon Peter will now see people alive, will see them into life. Just as his being seen by Jesus has caught his attention and made him fully alive. It gave Simon Peter and James and John the courage to move beyond their fear and leave everything to follow Jesus' lead, to begin to see others as Jesus sees them. I think that many of us can identify with Simon today. We feel stuck. We are at an impasse. This pandemic has revealed that much of what we thought we knew, what used to work for us, doesn't work anymore. What had been normal wasn't working for a whole lot of people, actually, and the pandemic has made that clear, too. We aren't sure who we are or what we are supposed to do anymore. It is tempting to try to go back to the old normal, to keep throwing the nets out in the shallow end. Even if it wasn't working so well, at least it was familiar. The invitation and the challenge before us are to push out from the familiar shoreline into the deep waters, to be willing to enter into a more intimate 
relationship with Jesus. We don't know who we are or what we're supposed to do. But Jesus does. He invites us to slowly, gently see ourselves as we are reflected in his eyes. And to trust that God will provide what we need to follow Jesus' lead. Whoever else you may be, you are God's beloved. There is so much more to you than you think there is. Whatever else you may do, and I know many of you do amazing and wonderful work, but whatever else you may do, you are also apprenticed to Jesus. This pandemic has made us afraid of each other, afraid to be fully alive. The way forward is to catch people, to see them as Jesus sees them, so that we may embrace life together again. But first we have to allow ourselves to be seen. Then we can push out into the deep waters, together, along with some friends. Simon Peter brought James and John, at the very least. Don't try this alone at home. <laughs> Jesus just keeps showing up and inviting people into a relationship with him that will change their life. He wants to get into our business. He wants us to wake up. He wants us to follow him and invite others to be seen and changed by him. It is scary to die to the old normal. But by doing so, we might just discover a new normal in which we are fully alive in ways we could never have anticipated. Welcome to the deep water. Amen. <laughs>